Hello, welcome back to the NBA DFS Slate Breakdown for Friday, November 3rd. We're back. We're breaking it down. We got a seven-game slate, which is kind of my preferred size. I, I really like those six to eight gamers. Uh, when you get over 10, I think there's a little bit too much. Below six, not quite enough. And uh, seven, it's just right. So we got some uh, exciting spots to go over. But before we do, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all our videos. Helps us out a ton. Just improve that reach and give you guys more content. So, after all, more content's good, right? All right, now, let's get into this slate. I think it is an interesting one. There are a couple interesting spots I think we could go over. And uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to go over... Uh, we're going to go a little more uh, p position... Or, sorry... Team by team, again, like we did uh, just the other day. We'll go through ownership and all of that uh, as well. So, let's start with some of the highest owned uh, guys here on Rayoff Kings. Uh, so, Brogdon, Derek Jones, Josh Richardson, Jeremy Grant, Marcus Smart, and Vucevic are all the highest owned guys on DraftKings. Now, before we go team by team, I'm going to just give you my take on those. You know I've been on Brogdon the last few games he's played. Now I think I'm jumping off. His price has got up to 6500 He's good for that mid-30s. But I don't think he's going to get the minutes to be able to really get into the 40s. Unless he's playing hyper efficiently which at high ownership I'm not going to bet on uh Derek Jones uh look his median projection is going to look decent because he's playing minutes but Kyrie Irvin's back his usage is going to go down and I don't think you could expect <clears throat> mid 20 points from him this week or tonight I think you're going to expect uh, mid teens, and that's not going to get it done. So, I'm a little out on him. Josh Josh Richardson, what he just all of a sudden is going to play a ton of minutes? Like, I mean, he played 30, he played 23, but for a while now, you know, he just hasn't been able to do it. He's at point six one fantasy. Uh, points per minute and even at playing 30 minutes that's just not really getting it done and so if everybody's on him I think he's a value piece you can kind of skip over and I'm not really loving it uh Jeremy Grant my issue with him is all he's doing is scoring he's not giving you any other stats or very few 24 points one rebound no assists one steal Put up six rebounds here and had an okay game, but like 34 at 6,400 isn't going to win you anything. So I do have some worries about Grant. Now, Portland is shorthanded tonight. Some of these guys are going to get extended run. Grant is probably one of them, but I just can't count on him to get the ancillary stats that are really needed to blow out a $6,400 price tag. Uh, Marcus Smart. He's decent. I do like him as a Grizzly. He's being asked to do more than he ever has, really. And he's shooting the ball more. But I think his price tag's getting about his ceiling. And so I'm not loving that as well. So those are my takes on the highest owned guys. I really don't think you need any of them. Now, with that being said, I do like a lot of chalkier pieces today. This is one of those slates that I'm kind of surprised how with the field I am as far as some of my spots. Now, let's get uh, team by team a little bit. So, uh, I'll go over to FanDuel for that. Oh, shoot. Before I do that, I got to go over ownership on FanDuel. So, Brogdon, Tillman, Giannis, Bain, Grant. Uh, look. I like Bain, I like Giannis, I like Tillman. 
I think they're all moderately priced. Giannis is close to like a low price that we've seen for years now. So I think he's very interesting. He obviously has a very high ceiling, but we've been seeing floor game after floor game for him. And I don't know if it's he's trying to give Lillard his space so Lillard can get going or what, but Giannis needs to take over a little bit. And it could start to be this game. I'm kind of in on that. Uh, now, let's go team by team. So, uh, Brooklyn, Dinwiddie said he's going to play. So, I think you got to expect him to play. I do not mind him at 6,400. I think he is interesting. And Mikel Bridges. Outside of those two, I don't really love anything. I don't mind if you get to a little bit of Simmons or a little... Maybe Royce O'Neal, but I don't really love anything out of those two. Now, into Chicago. Zach Levine is, Levine is probable. I expect him to play. Uh, only thing I really out of, like out of Chicago right now is Levine and Kobe White. I think both of them are moderately priced for their capabilities. I don't love that White is super chalky. On FanDuel at least, but uh, you know, he's playing the minutes and that's helpful. One thing I will say that could hurt his minutes a little bit is Ayo Dasu Dusunubu. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh he is questionable. <coughs> he could play. He's played a couple games, hasn't played much, but um he has some respiratory illness. So, <clears throat> maybe he has whatever I have. But mine's just sinuses. I'm good. So, those are the only two guys I really like from Chicago. Again, I don't mind DeRozan. I don't mind Vooch. Vooch has a real high ceiling. I think his price is just starting to get up there. DeRozan's price is still very low for what he can do. 8K for a guy that can give 50 is not bad. Uh, Cleveland. All right. So Darius Garland is expect, or sorry, Jared Allen and Darius Garland are both questionable. Donovan Mitchell is expected to play. Uh, as far as this team, I really only like Struess right now at 5,400. And I think Garland coming back actually helps him because Garland is a very good passer and it may give Struess the ball in his hand a little bit more. Uh, I think Mobley's in a very good spot if Jarrett Allen is out. If Jarrett Allen's out there, he does take, you know, about 0.1 fantasy point per minute hit with Jarrett Allen there. Uh, Jarrett Allen, really hard to know how many, how many minutes he's going to play. At 6,900, he's okay, but I do worry that he would, you know, get cut at 28 minutes or something like that. <sighs> All right, Dallas, <clears throat> excuse me, Kyrie Irving is expected back. He said he's going to play today. I actually like him quite a bit. I think uh, Don Kick might be a little bit too high uh, priced with Irving back, but I think Kyrie is in a good spot uh, that he could go well over in a game environment that I like. Highest scoring game on the slate, close game. And his price came down a little bit. So I like Irving. Outside of that, I'm not really a huge fan of anybody else on that team. Obviously, you can't go wrong with Dark Kick. I do think his price is a little up there, though. On Denver, I do like Denver. Dallas has been in high-scoring games. They've put up 125-plus. They've allowed a couple guys, teams to get up to 120 or 110s. So I think there's going to be some points in this game. And I like Jamal Murray, KCP, Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon. I don't mind uh, Joe Kick, but I'm probably just not prioritizing him today. I think those other guys are where I'm going to be at a little bit more. I'm kind of liking... Once again, the, you know, more balanced lineups. And Golden State. Uh, Golden State is really annoying me. They're playing way more guys than they usually do and playing guys less minutes. 
Uh, we look at Wiggins. <clears throat> His price is super low right now, but 20 to 28 minutes all season? You know, that's just not going to get it done. Now, is there a chance this game he plays more? Yes. And that is the only way I'm getting to Golden State guys right now. I don't mind Wiggins. I don't mind Clay. The two of the cheaper guys who, if they get going, might fall into a couple extra minutes. Clay is exactly that guy. They're lower owned, so I am interested. But their minutes up to this point definitely worries me. And get over to the Pacers. All right. Uh, Halliburton is questionable. I do expect him to play. Obviously, this whole game changes big time if he doesn't. But if it's uh, with that only being plus three for the Pacers, I think that sports books are also assuming he is in. Uh, as far as this Pacers side, I don't really like anything. I will have a little bit of Halliburton outside of that. I'm just not really getting to any of it. This is another team where their minutes have been kind of low for guys, really limiting their ceilings. I may have a little bit of Obi Topping just because he's 4,300, but I just don't know if the ceiling's there for him. There's not much I'm really liking here. Uh, Memphis. This is a game environment I really like. Trailblazers suck. Memphis sucks. Uh, Memphis is still down big uh, big guys. One guy, one thing I will add, Santi Aldama is now doubtful. He's been out for weeks. If for some reason throughout the day he goes into questionable, I will back off um, <clears throat> some of the some of the uh, big men for Memphis, but. I do like all of them. I like Tillman. I like Bain. I like Jackson. I like Smart. I like Zaire Williams. Zaire is still a nice value play. Tillman, I think, is too cheap. If you uh, look, in games that he did not get into foul trouble, he's played 30-plus minutes. And so I think we can expect 30, 32 minutes against, you know, in a decent matchup versus the Timberwolves. And so I am interested in it. And it's a spot where the Timberwolves have been allowing uh, opposing centers to get like 10 boards a game. Um, at 320, plus 320, I did bet Tillman for a double-double. Uh, only like half a unit there. But uh, I think it's an interesting spot to to attack. Uh, all of them have some ownership, though, except for Zaire, which is weird to me because I think he's very safe for, you know, close to, if not six plus X. Uh, outside of those guys, not really any love there. <sighs> Miami, I mean, we got Jimmy B here. He's priced really low. It. It is a game, maybe he tries a little bit. They eight, are eight-point favorites, but his price is just getting to the point that it is so low that I have to take some interest. He could easily come out, play 34, and put up mid-40s. Um, and I'm going to have to take some swings there. He's not that high-owned. I, I like it. I think Hero's price is getting up a little bit. Uh, I don't mind him, though. I think that he is the most likely one to go off. And if Jimmy Butler's taking it off a little bit, then Kyle Lowry likely picks up some of the slack. He just doesn't have much of a ceiling, but 6x is absolutely feasible. Milwaukee. All right, so... One thing I got to say is they've been letting guys score a lot of points. They've had to score a lot. And I think that's kind of the same thing we see today. Uh, I like Giannis. I think it's probably going to be a higher scoring game than most expect. And then I also like Malik Be uh, Beasley. Beasley is playing decent minutes. 30. Yeah, only had 25 uh, last game, but outside of that game, he's been in the 30 minutes. He's only 4,500. 
and he's being asked to attack a little bit. He's shooting the threes, and if they fall, he's got that 28, 30 point potential at 4,500. I definitely like it. Uh, outside of them, I'm not really getting to much. Lillard's price is getting low, so I get it if you want to go there. I just don't love it. I would like that price to fall a little bit more. Knickerbockers. Uh, I love Brunson. I love Randall. I think both of their prices are too low at this point, and both of them are absolutely in play. Uh, Grimes is a value option, but... He just doesn't do enough for me to really get there with any sort of consistency. And Mitchell Robinson's price is starting to get up a little too high for me. It is pretty much stars for the net Knicks for me or nothing. Okay, OKC is a team that's getting a lot of ownership here. We have SGA out. I like Dort, Giddy, Isaiah Joe, and Chet, Chet Holmgren. Now, Isaiah Joe is one that isn't getting much ownership. He's a value piece. We don't have him projected that high. The only reason I like him is because I'm expecting him to get some extra minutes. And he is a guy that when he gets the minutes, could put the ball in the bucket. He can score in bunches. And without SGA, I think there is a path to him getting more minutes. Now, it is a risky one. And if that ownership is higher, I am out on him. But as a low-owned piece, I think he's a little bit interesting uh, and will absolutely consider going there. One of the things I do have to say is I'm not getting to as much Giddy or Jalen Williams as I thought I would. Both their prices just got up a little bit too high for me to really have much com comfort there. Whereas Lou Dort, I'm getting pretty high amount of at this point i think his price point is just low enough he's able to do a lot and it opens you up a lot in uh with the rest of the lineup at 4800 so i am getting to dort a lot probably a little bit too much and it's somebody i'm probably going to come down on a little bit but i'm going to say that i like him quite a bit right now and i'm getting to him a little bit too much all right, Portland, this is a total mess. So, Simons is out. Scoot is now out. Uh, Shaden Sharp is probable. And all the ownership is coming here. All of it's going to Brogdon and Grant. As I said, I don't love Brogdon in this spot. I don't think his minutes are going to go up that much. His salary is going up as it should have. Um but I think he's priced kind of near his ceiling with the minutes that he's playing. Now, they're in a decent matchup. You know my thoughts on Grant as well. I don't love it. I will get to a little of both of them, just not as much as the field. Now, I do like Shaden Sharp, Skylar Mays, and DeAndre Ayton. I think those are my favorite plays from this team. Skylar Mays, look, there is Sharp Brogdon. And Mays, the only real guards on this team. I think Mays is going to walk into 28 minutes. We've seen him in the past have chances of, uh, or have some very big games when he has the ball in his hand. End of last year, 36 minutes, puts up 47. 41 minutes, puts up 49. 30 minutes, 22, 27, 28. He has that capability uh, when he's getting the minutes to put the ball into the bucket. And it does intrigue me a little bit with nobody going there. Now, it is a late, it's the last game on the slate. So it's kind of hard to trust when you, you're not going to have any idea of what is going on as far as uh, the lineup or whatnot. But I do think there's a path to minutes there. And it is one of the places that I'm getting to that the field is not so far. Uh, DeAndre Ayton, look, he's a guy that we've talked about since, you know, the start of this season where if he's getting the minutes, he's a smash. He's got the minutes the last few games, 32, 34. Um, as long as he does not get in foul trouble, it appears that he's going to get the minutes. 
and it's a guy that could put up mid 40s into 50s and on a team that is short guys and will need kind of difference makers and score scorers and that's part of the reason why i like Mays too is this team's going to need more guys to put the ball in the bucket tonight and Mays can do that as well as Aiton. And lastly, we got Washington here. Uh, not getting to any of them, really. I, maybe a little Kuzma. I could see you going to Denny Alvira, uh, But outside of that, I, I just don't know. This team is a total mess. I worry about Gafford's minutes. Don't love the matchup versus Miami. And so I'm kind of off of that. So all in all, that's where we're at. We uh, we got a very interesting slate here. A lot of different ownership to go to. And some nice uh, salary savers, if you will. We just got to figure out our spots and attack accordingly. Now, pay attention to news throughout the day. Because all of this stuff is going to change. That's why I've been trying to not harp too much on ownership right now. Um as there's going to be significant changes throughout the day, but it's going to be a fun slate. We got seven games. Happy Friday to you all. Good luck. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be back next week. Adios.